So if you've been around the channel a while, you know that I have been iPad first for quite a while. But that's kind of changing a little bit right now. And today I'm going to try and talk about why it's changing, what what do I like, how do I use my Mac right now, and what am I doing with it, and what am I doing with my iPad, what am I still using my iPad for. That's it. If, if I'm trying to start to go to my finishing, not, finish, not finishing the video now. If you want to support the channel though, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash curtismichael, or you can take one of my courses at curtismichael.ca slash skillshare. But let's dig in to just what I'm thinking about iPad OS, Mac OS, and even the new iPads, which came out today. So you can tell I'm recording this on April 20th. So the new iPads. Let's start there. I, I haven't done a lot of research. I actually totally missed the, the Arisen Apple event today. I didn't watch it. I just kind of looked at the pricing. And while I will likely get a new iPad, I am not sure that the features offered are going to change what I use my iPad for now. And honestly, I use my iPad a lot. I, I still do use it a lot, a lot for my research. I use it a lot for my, um, my, my reading, my research. I have in my desk, I actually just slide over to the side. Oh, over there. And uh, my iPad's on a Visa arm. It has kind of my notes right now. And I can bring it forward, and then I have a keyboard, which is actually over here, because my wife uses my desk, uses the desk on Tuesday. It's over here, sorry, over there. My wife uses the desks on Tuesday, and I watch the kids while she gets to focus on work, and I kind of get to split focus, because she does that the other four days of the week, actually. And that kind of comes down just to income in our family. And she also spends uh, every day after 3 o'clock off working, and I spend that watching the kids, because um, she's a figure skating coach after school. Um... I don't even know where I was going with that. So what, I guess what do I use the iPad for? I use the iPad for my writing, my research. I use it. I very rarely take my, you know, brand new M1 MacBook Air off my desk. It sits here. It's what's streaming. I guess I'm streaming. I'm using Ecamm to record now. Um, so it hooks up to that. I use it for my video calls. And then my, sorry, my Mac is right here. My Mac is right here. I have a 27-inch monitor. And then my iPad is actually in sidecar mode, kind of above it with the camera. Sitting in the middle, then I'll have my overhead camera set up, so I can't actually show you this. Um, and so I use it for sidecar mode, I use it to play music during the day, and I use it for writing and research. I do a lot of my writing, a lot of my research there. Like even when I'm sitting here on my Mac and I'm saying I need to do research for something for work, I need to research Canadian privacy laws. Um, like GDRP, but for Canada, for BC specifically, and I did that on my iPad. I slid over to the side. I did that on my iPad for work because I'm the token Canadian in the company. So I got to research the Canadian stuff. Um, and I do that for research and code stuff lots of times too. I do that for most of my writing notes. Most of my, like my writing when I'm reading a book is done on my iPad in craft. Um, in fact, almost all. Very rarely am I doing it on my Mac. Um, but then I do almost all of my programming now from my Mac. I do most of my daily computing from my Mac. I have started, I actually did buy Final Cut Pro and I've started trying to edit videos on my Mac. I guess learning to edit videos on my Mac because I've done Luma Touch Luma for a long time. And while they've offered some features like multicam and they say it's coming, um, I haven't seen it yet. And I'm starting to need some more features like that or I'm starting to want to do projects that need features like that and make that so much easier. Um, even recently editing like a, an hour long uh, program for my wife's, for the skating club that my daughters are part of, that my wife runs. And needing to edit that, I edited it in LumaFusion and it worked, but there were just problems, right? When I take a 90 gig backup file and I've got to get 90 gigs off the iPad, that doesn't work on AirDrop. It wasn't transferring to SD cards. It wasn't transferring to like anything. And I had to use this hacky workaround with uh, AnyTrans, I think was the app. And get it onto, what did I get it onto anyway, Stephen? It might have been an SD card that I then plugged in to the, uh, to my Mac and then got off my Mac. So I had a 90 gig full project backup of the phone, of the uh, videos with all the cuts, with everything like that. And I'm hitting some things like that that are just a pain in the butt. A little bit of that might be alleviated with Thunderbolt coming up on the new ones. 
Uh, I don't think I read anything about new multi-screen support. Again, if we had better multi-screen support where I could have, say, my main code editor up on my big screen and have like reference material on my uh, iPad, again, we might, you know, have more. Or if I could even, you know, split, do a 70-30 split on my big screen with my editor and with some reference tools and then a browser on my iPad. And again, we might be able to do more here. But ultimately, I'm just finding roadblocks in my usage of it, specifically around my coding work, because I end up needing a code editor open, a browser open, I'm looking at Rike, and then our Slack chat's pretty quiet. It's just really the, you know, two web developers right now, three when, the, when I hire a third one. So that's not necessarily something I need to have like around all the time, but I feel like I need to be referencing Google Docs in one and the website in the other because I'm looking, you know, copy and pasting content and I have Rike in another one to kind of make sure I'm keeping track of the task. So I just need, it feels like I need um, more than one screen and, and more than one screen more than just more real estate. So even when I'm working, say, at the kitchen table today on my Mac, um, I ended up after like 20 minutes being like, this isn't working and grabbing my iPad and putting it in sidecar mode so I had multiple monitors for my Mac just on the kitchen table. And that really seems to be the big thing that feels like the limitation, at least with my coding work, is that I don't have the multiple screens I need to reference my work. That's where I sit right now between Mac OS, iPad OS, that's it. I don't think the M1 machine makes any difference whatsoever to it. It just doesn't make any difference whatsoever. I actually don't notice that it's faster. I do notice the battery life. I worked from oh, about 9 o'clock till 4 o'clock and still had like tons of battery left on my Mac and on my iPad, tons of like 70 or 80% on my iPad. I watched some videos over lunch on my iPad and that's it. So my Mac, my iPad does actually come with me in the house. My Mac barely ever moves. That's it. That's where I sit. If you have any other questions about it, ask them below. I'll do my best to answer them or do another video. Or maybe you can show up to the office hours I'm trying to run on Friday. It should be about, should be starting around one o'clock um, Pacific and it'll go till uh, two to four. Uh, or sorry, three to four, depending on just what I have going on that day. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know when something happens. You can become a patron as well at patreon.com slash Curtis McHale. Or you can take one of my courses, uh, like my course on Zettelkasten, which you'll find below uh, in a link. That'll take you up to Skillshare. And you can join us on Discord. The link is below. I don't remember. These are all gibberish links. So just look below. There's a whole bunch of links to stuff. Have an awesome day.